Hey guys, before we get to the video, please click that subscribe button. Thank you. Hey guys, hey guys Joshua Griffin here, serving the Middle Peninsula in the Northern Neck of Virginia. We're out on a snowy, winter, like rainy, nasty day, fixing some heat. And wanted to do a video because I've, I've had this question a little bit and I just wanna give you a few things to think about if you're looking at the locations of your systems. Now, I'm, if you have a package unit, whether it be outside or on the roof, I know there's different parts of the country that that's kind of the thing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking strictly about split systems and you know, meaning you're gonna have an outdoor unit, either being a heat pump or air conditioner, and you're gonna have an indoor unit that's either a furnace or an air handler. And I wanna give you a few things to think about uh, when you were talking about both. Okay, so I'm gonna break it down and we're gonna talk about the outdoor units first and then we'll talk about the indoor units. Let me just say, you know, if, if you've come across this video and you're like, well, why does it matter? I'm gonna go through why you know, it matters. Why some things you need to think about when it comes to the locations of these systems. And a lot of times when it comes to the outdoor units, a lot of folks will say, well, I, I you know, I want to just put it wherever it's out of the way, basically. You know, I don't want to see it from the, the road. I don't want to see it from, say, you know, if, you're, if your house is, say, on the, the water, I don't, I don't want folks to see it from there. So, you know, and that plays a role in this. I think that ultimately, you know, I could, I could probably do 15 videos on different scenarios and locations and things like that. But I will say if you have a heat pump system, you know, in the old days, when those systems would go into defrost mode, it was quite noisy. Uh, I don't want to say those days are completely over, but they've come a long way. So like, these days, a lot of today's systems will, you know, turn off, let the refrigerant balance and equalize, and then it will go into defrost mode. And so it makes it a little less noisy. Uh, back in the old days, I mean, it sounded like, you know, sounded like air brakes on a, a tractor trailer sometimes, you know, it was like, and it would run backwards. And, and that's how it would do the defrost mode. Um, so, you know, that's one thing to think about. Now, why does that matter? If you, you know, if you're planning to spend a lot of time, say on your porch, or if you're looking at locating the system near a bedroom window, you know, just be aware of that. It's gonna make noises. Uh, if you're a heavy sleeper, then no big deal probably. But if you're a light sleeper, that's something to think about. The, o the only other thing I'll say about uh, the location of the outdoor unit is just be conscious as especially as we get more into sorry I'm going across a bridge so it might be vibrant and bouncing up and down the camera but the only other thing I'll say when it comes to the location of your outdoor unit because we're going to talk about the indoor units in a second is that you know a lot of systems perform I don't want to say better but you might, you're going to have less problems I don't want to say the shorter the line sets, there is a possibility that they're too short and then the person that's charging the system, uh, you know, they don't they don't dial it in perfectly because it's hard, you know, you got to get that boiling point just right and so on. So you have a little leniency if you have a little length on your line sets. I just want to say, you know, the closer it is to the indoor unit, uh, you know, that compressor is not having to work as hard. A lot of systems will make you go up in size on your line sets if you start getting significantly long runs. If you have a large home and you're putting those outdoor units way on the other side of the house, that could be an issue. So just be aware of that. So now let's talk about indoor units. We're talking about the furnace or the air handler inside and there's different parts of the country that different things are uh, common, right? So some parts of the country you may see systems in the attic more. Some parts of the country, you're gonna see the systems in the crawl spaces more. And then obviously, some parts of the country, the uh, systems are gonna be located in the home somewhere, whether it be a mechanical room or a, you know, a laundry room or whatever, uh, or a closet, you know, it's located inside the house. So I just wanna give you a few things to think about when you're looking at 
where you're going to locate it. Now, if you're hit, if your house is already built and you are replacing the system, uh, moving the system to a new location is, you know, a project in a lot of cases. It's not hard to do in some cases, you know, you just relocate it and run your ducks to the new location. But just realize uh, you know, it could be quite a project if you're gonna look at locating it in a different place. That said, if you're building a house from the ground up or you have the option of relocating it somewhere else, let's talk about the pros and cons of those three scenarios. The first scenario, I'll just say, if it's located in your house, in my mind, you know, it's not exposed to the elements, it's, you know, it, it's easy, you know, obviously it's easier for guys like me to service it. If we get a vote, we're going to vote for it to be easily accessible. Um, not having to climb in a hot attic or in a, a moist crawl space. And, you know, we can take care of it. But I'm going to talk about the attic and the crawl spaces in a second. And that is something to be, to be mindful of, you know. It's going to be exposed to some type of elements if it's, you know, in, in one of those locations. Whereas if it's in your home, uh, you know, somewhere in the house, it's in a conditioned location. The air handler is able to do what it needs to do, but it's not, you know, super hot or super, you know, moist atmosphere or so on. So, you know, honestly, if, if I were, uh, you know, vote, if, if I was the heating and air guy and I got a vote in it, I would, I think it's always a great idea to have it located in the home somewhere. I would probably even go so far to say that statistics would probably show that systems that are located in the home might have less problems than some of those other systems. I don't know. Uh, I'm just throwing that out there. So let's talk next about crawl spaces. If you're going to locate it in the crawl or it's already located in the crawl space, you know, years ago, uh, you know, crawl spaces were wet. Uh, they were sometimes cold in the winter time. You're almost subjecting that system to a, a little bit of elements that it wouldn't be in, in some of those other locations. There are some pros to uh, having it located in your crawl space. The first thing is if you ever had an issue and it actually leaked water or something like that, it would be not dripping in your home. That's, you know, not a bad thing, especially if you're conscious of that. But if you have a gas appliance, a gas furnace or an oil furnace, something that has uh, the capability of creating carbon monoxide, I would not go to sleep tonight without getting a carbon monoxide detector put in your home. Uh, all it takes is for the flue pipe to just crack a little and now you've got you know, an, an odorless, poisonous gas that's leaking into your home. I remember years ago, we watched a, uh, my wife and I watched, it was like a Dateline or a 2020 type special, and they had this hotel room that they thought was haunted, uh, but it wasn't haunted. People were dying because the flu pipe in this hotel on their heating system was below that room, and, it, and they were literally going to sleep and never waking up again. So that's a huge deal. If your appliance, if your indoor unit is below your living space and it burns some sort of fossil fuel, definitely get a carbon monoxide detector right now, right away. Don't go to sleep tonight without it. What's next? So if we're talking about the indoor unit being located in a crawl space, you know, as time has gone on, crawl spaces have actually gotten nicer. Uh, it, you know, we're seeing conditioned, encapsulated, crawl spaces now it gets back to what I was talking about when the system's located in your home if it's in a conditioned space and it's not exposed to any sorts of elements to me and my brain that's a good thing you know the system's able to you know perform as best as it can without being in a hot attic and it's got more of an ability to reach temperatures and things like that without having to be you know sitting outside like a package unit or up in the attic when it can get super hot in the summertime. The last thing I'll say about the crawl space, and you could say the same thing about the attic, but probably more so for the crawl space, is 
please make sure you're having that system maintained properly at least at least minimum once a year because I can't tell you how many times we've gone into folks crawl spaces and found absolute disasters and people didn't even know a lot of cases they don't even know where the system is you know I, I'll go into their house and I'll say hey where is your indoor unit and they're like I don't I didn't know I had an indoor unit and and I'm like yeah you do you have an indoor unit and so you know a lot of times folks let things just go or they're not maintained properly because they're in the crawl space or whatever out of sight out of mind type of deal until it's too late right you know they have a humidifier that's not being maintained properly so the the pad has gotten all gross and even moldy in some cases uh, you know in some cases they have a you know some type of whole house home filter down there and it's not being changed as often as it should maybe they have an electrostatic air filter down there I, I, I hate electrostatic air filters and you know it's not because they don't work it's because nobody maintains them like they should just about I mean I would say 80% of people that have them they're useless because they're never cleaned and the you know the system's sitting there trying to you know clean the air and it can't the electrostatic filter is dirty or the cells are dirty or that's it for crawl spaces and then finally just to you know quickly go through whether it makes sense for the system to be located in the attic uh, obviously there's a few risks uh, involved and they're not necessarily huge deal breakers if it makes sense for the system to be in the attic then it makes sense for the system to be in the attic but if your system is located in the attic, obviously if the system were to leak, misses the drain pan or the float switches don't stop the system or whatever, it could leak through your ceiling. The other thing when it comes to the system being in the attic is depending on what state you're in, it could be exposed to extremely high temperatures. So here it is trying to blow cool air in your home and the indoor unit is sitting in an oven so that's not good it's sometimes struggling to keep the house cool because the system itself is just having a hard time that said if you have a nice ventilated attic and the system is up there working or whatever uh you know one thing to think about as i was talking about the fossil fuels being burned in the house or crawl space especially i would say that you run a smaller risk it's still a big deal if you're leaking carbon monoxide and you don't have a carbon monoxide detector in your home but you run less of a risk in my mind if you have a well ventilated attic and you know you had a problem and it was leaking carbon monoxide to me, you're in a little less risk of it harming your family. Uh, I'm not saying the risk is gone, but it's less risky than say if the system was located in the crawl space below your living space. The last thing I'll say about the attic is just the same thing as the crawl space, out of sight, out of mind type of deal. A lot of people, they're not maintaining them properly. Then they do have something leak through their ceiling and it is horrible. Again, if you're in a position where you can decide where the system's going to be located, I hope this helps. You know, just a few things to think about, things that you want to pay attention to as you're deciding where you're locating these indoor and outdoor units. That's just a few things to think about. I know some of the folks that watch my videos are way smarter than me. They're, they're actually in the trade as well, and sometimes they'll make comments. So if you think about something else that would affect, you know, where the system is located, some things to think about, please put them down in the comments uh, because it, it does help folks, you know, a lot of times when you guys are making those comments. The last thing I wanted to say before we wrap up is I had a comment recently where they said, you know, is that guy wearing a hairpiece? <laughs> And I, I, I love my beautiful hair, but it is not a toupee. I'm only, uh, you know, 36 years old during the making of this video. And uh, this is my hair. I have uh, thick hair that my mama uh, gave me that I inherited from her. And um, yeah, so I, I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that it looks like a toupee. <laughs> in these videos like right you know back when we were in elementary school we could shake our hair and make it look like a toupee <laughs> but it is it's my hair so uh anyway just throwing that out there 
eh, you probably don't care. <laughs> Thanks for watching. With all that said, if you're in our coverage area and you are in the market for a new heating and air system, give us a call. We'll give you a free estimate. We'll give you a great warranty, the best warranty, I think, in the area. And, you know, we'd love to earn your business. If you're not in our coverage area, but you're in the market for a new heating and air system, before you spend thousands, check out my website, newhvacguide.com. And the whole idea behind this website is just like a CPA would help you with your taxes. This is going to help you with the purchase of, in a lot of cases, the third largest investment that you're going to make uh, behind your house, behind your car. A lot of folks, their heating and air system is the third largest investment. With that said, we put so much information on there. I, it's almost as if I wrote a book, decided not to because it, it you know, as soon as I do, it's going to be outdated. New technology comes out, new, all kinds of information comes out. And so this website is like a book, but it's constantly being added and changed. So you know, we even have a whole page called no-nos, things to stay away from, things that you want to avoid in your pursuit of purchasing a heating and air system. And we just have the step-by-step -step guide. So newhvacguide.com. And lastly, please subscribe if you haven't already. We really appreciate your support and stay tuned for more videos, tips, tricks, and uh, appreciate it. Thank you.